All right, so today's episode is involving my lovely 1984 Toyota Sunraider 21 foot rear dinette. Now these came in two variants. You could get a Sunraider in 18 foot and you could get it in 21 foot. I chose a 21 foot because it's just a little bit longer, a little bit more storage area and just a little bit more working area because I would do trips that could be possibly a month long. And I felt that the 18 foot was just a little cramped. Not that it's not a bad thing, that's just my preference. But today's video essentially involves the pros and cons of a Sun Raider because I feel that I've owned this one long enough to justify doing an episode with enough credibility to ha state the pros and cons of a Sun Raider. Do I still like the Sun Raider? I absolutely do. It's still one of my favorite Toyota based, even just basic RV based platforms. It really is a unique and special and really versatile RV in my opinion. But with everything in life, there are pros and there are cons. And that's what I'm gonna kind of go over today. More just to give the viewers an idea of what to expect when owning a Sun Raider. And maybe it'll work for them and maybe it won't. But that's my point is to do videos like this to kind of shed light on why I chose this particular platform versus the dozens of others that are out there. You know, you have modern day vans today that are involving turbo diesels and you know they'll do highway speeds beyond what this will ever do so you just got to consider a lot of the variables so let's begin with this video like i said this is a 21 footer i like that for the main reason of getting around in tight places and this is where a pro would be with the sun raider or any of these toyota chassis it is like driving a very large pickup truck and yet it's a full-size rv with living quarters shower toilet dining table cookware everything you could want it's a home on wheels but it drives like a truck it is very versatile in getting into super tight places i will drive this in downtown denver or any city in general and feel completely comfortable parallel parking this so that's a pro it's incredibly easy and maneuverable in tight places versus if you had this big old pusher diesel pusher you you got to plan strategically with those this i will literally park it in a metered spot downtown so pro another pro is particularly with the sun raiders two-piece design does not really leak quote unquote asterisk it, they will leak if not treated right front seals around the cab windows will leak anywhere but in comparison to any other RV that is like essentially a compressed side panels five way. This is a two piece, so they leak much less and have a much less chance of leaking. This does not leak, so I haven't really had any per se of whether they do leak or they don't, but that's why I like the Sun Raider. Number three uh, pro, they are lightweight. Got to consider this vehicle is a 2.4 liter four cylinder with a four speed manual transmission. It maybe makes 110 horsepower, maybe, and yet it moves this. 21 foot RV slash truck chassis down a flat plane at 65 miles an hour with, with ease. Hills are a different story, but just consider that it's a lot of oomph and a lot of that has to do with that this chassis and this frame is and this uh, body is light. They're lightweight designs. Now, I've had this nearly three years now, going on four, uh, and uh, I've always wanted a Sun Raider because their versatility and their uniqueness and why I think that the Sun Raider is unique versus any other RV chassis is as well, it's a Toyota. In my opinion, build quality is there. That's a pro. The build quality of a Toyota is phenomenal. They're easy to work on. Parts are cheap in comparison to like a Mercedes Sprinter van. And you have to consider that this vehicle is nearly 40 years old and yet, it serves the, the purpose in modern day times for me perfectly fine. So I like that. Now, when I say it's a truck chassis, it is essentially a front truck chassis to a rear uh, camping cab. Now these are a dually. Now you gotta consider, here's where a pro comes into effect. There was a year and a period where these had what they were called a fake dually. A, a, they weren't a true one ton full floating axle. And those 
could shear and they caused accidents. I think even a couple of reported deaths because that whole axle would just shear off. So consider that when buying these. You wanna make sure that it has the updated one ton full floating axle. And a lot of Sun Raiders, if they're bone stock sitting in Ma and Pa's garage for the last 30 years, the probability of them having the full, full floating axle update is very slim. This did not when I got this. It had the five lug fake dually. I had to swap that axle over. And for safety reasons, that is a major con to consider. If you do not have the six lug full floating one ton rear axle, either plan to replace it or plan your funeral because that is a very safety considering aspect of these. That's a con. All right, outside. They're super easy, like I said, to work on. Uh, aesthetically, they appeal. This truck just looks good. I mean, this is probably one of my favorite parts about this vehicle, and I'll show you the inside, is this wraparound front cab bed area. This is the bed area. Uh, here's another con. I am five foot nine. You will lose a considerable high amount of brain cells by simply getting into a Sun Raider. And why that is, I is that. <laughs> this. Happened to me yesterday, <laughs> three times. Three times just yesterday. And it happens every day you get in this vehicle. And I'm 5'4". Yeah. <laughs> uh, clearance, you need to duck to get in. I'm not saying that ever, all the new RVs are like that, maybe they are, but just consider that is clearance. You will smack your noggin. And, it, and now my mind is trained to duck and hop in. First 500 times of getting in this chassis, I have smacked my noggin getting in, I have smacked my noggin getting out. So, that is a con. Head clearance, clearance for the cab. This is a, I would call this a short person friendly RV. If you are over six foot tall, you are gonna be doing the limbo to get in here. Just consider that. Once you're in, it is great. And aesthetically, view wise, it is wonderful. You know, basic maintenance free crank windows. You have this vent right here that brings in more air than you ever need. As far as driving and looking around, easy to see other traffic, other cars, for considering that there's a big box behind us. This is a four speed manual. Some came in automatics. I would definitely advise doing a manual if you can. Performance, drivability, gas mileage, less things to go wrong, and overall power delivery is why I prefer a manual transmission. I mean, you th you're pretty comfortable in these seats, aren't you? Super comfy. These seats are great. I, I really do like these seats, the cab area, uh, and to think that the bed area is right up over here. So it's a good, it's one thing to consider. I am perfectly comfortable in this and I love driving this. Actually, this is really enjoyable to drive considering it's 21 feet and a four cylinder. I still really enjoy driving this. So, that's it, maybe not. What? Anyways, so cat front cab area. Obviously the seat adjusts back and forth, but if you're really tall, consider a Sun Raider might be a little bit, bit of a tight squeeze uh, for driving and getting out. As you can see, my muscle memory has cleared my head from another head trauma. She's been struggling, but it's okay. All right, lots of windows, which I love about the Sun Raider. Propane areas right in here. Um, super easy to get in and out for refilling the tanks. Hello, Nuggets. All right, here's the front cab area. Okay, another con to consider if you have weak knees, you don't like high steps. There is no step system built into this. Some might have come with them. I've never seen a Sun Raider that has it. Obviously, I've lifted this truck so the clearance is even higher but there is a decent amount of steps to get in here. I like the Sun Raider for this reason, is this layout. So your kitchen area, your rear dinette area, like a full wraparound. Being in a really scenic spot, being parked, backed up, and you have all these windows open, and you're back here reading your book, is probably one of my favorite parts about a rear dinette Sun Raider. Uh, pro is this. A pro would be all the storage options you have in here. Storage, 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 storage. All this is storage. There's storage underneath. 
There is tons of tons of storage options and it is wonderful. I love that. This turns into a bed for your guests. Um, I updated a lot of things on this. If you saw in the previous video of the whole interior tour, because a lot of this stuff was outdated, it was 80s. It looked 80s. I didn't like it. So that's why I updated it with new stuff. So pros are obviously the layout, the cab layout. I feel that the usage of space for only being 21 foot is phenomenal. Almost feels like it's 30 feet just because of how every bit of this area is utilized and very open. And almost all rear dinette sun raiders are like this. They also have other sun raiders that have a kitchenette in the back, couch. There's multiple layouts. Um, this does have a full bathroom, like I said, and it works great. I am very thankful to have a bathroom that I can just pull over. And if I got like Ken, when we talk about short person, friendly, my head is at the ceiling. I, but not touching the ceiling. I'm very comfortable where I'm at. This RV fits me really well. Five foot nine. If you're six foot, you're probably gonna be doing this. So consider the fact that this is a very short person friendly RV. A little shower, sink, toilet, everything. You couldn't ask for any more than that. So that is a pro. It's having your own bathroom and shower. I'm oh, sorry, kid. Didn't mean to hit you there. All right, here's the bed area. Um, I love the bed area. I'm 50-50 when I say it's both a pro and a con. Pro is this wraparound window system is amazing, especially watching the sunrise. Sorry. You should be sorry. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, and it's just amazing to wake up to this. Now a con. Here's a con about the upper cab bed systems. And I originally was looking for an RV that had a rear bed system. I'm going to bed. Everything's good. I'm getting comfortable. Two people are up here. So you're moving over. Your head is right here. Somebody spooks you. Once again, Sun Raiders are head trauma oriented, tra head trauma focused RVs. What bam? You get up. What bam? You have to do Mission Impossible getting out of these. So it's a little claustrophobic, especially the closer you get to the window here. I have a mattress topper on top of this mattress. It's a foam, so it's raised it a little bit. But still consider the fact, if you get claustrophobic easy, there's not a lot of clearance between the ceiling and your bed and the upper cab. So I would say that is a con of the Sun Raiders is because there's just not a lot of clearance. I am not that big. So this fits me well, but even that is a tight fit when two people are up here as far as clearance. That's a con. Other than that, interior wise, there's really not much to, to complain about. I love the interior. You're gonna get, with an older IV, this is 40 years old. You're gonna get weird smells. You're gonna get weird discolorations that just don't go away, odors, and you'll try everything you can. There's something about an older IV, they off gas some sort of scent. I don't know what it is, but this has a very particular scent. All, and my last Sun Raider was the same way. It just must be 80s RVs. They have a particular scent. So if you don't like weird smells sometimes, consider that. This smells like an 80s RV. And I've tried my best to counteract that, but there's always that little bit, if it sits, especially if it sits. Um, ri driving and ri drivability of this, I would say there's pros are it gets a decently good gas mileage for being 21 foot. I average 14 to 15 miles a gallon. Up big hills is more like 13. I've gotten upwards as much as 17, and that was because there's no wind. Actually, I had a tailwind, and it's flat, and that contributed to the good gas mileage. These drive a ride a little stiff, so consider that. What I mean by stiff is it's a long chassis, so you're gonna feel every bump, and some bumps are gonna hit a little hard. You can do airbag suspension on the rear to soften the ride a little bit, but there's still, just keep in mind, these are not gonna ride like a Cadillac. They ride stiff, it's a truck chassis plus an elongated frame. When you hit bumps, you're gonna feel it and stuff's gonna rattle, just consider that. But besides that, if you get over that, these are actually a really great driving vehicle. And um, pros would be, like I said, easy to work on. They get good gas mileage for what they are. And this is a carbureted version. Um, pros would be that easy to work on, easy to get parts for, cons, I had a fiasco with vacuum line issues because this has a vacuum system on it. 
I can show you. I have the factory ASIN carburetor on this. I like that carburetor because it contributes to the fact that this gets good gas mileage because of that. Downfall is there's a bunch of vacuum lines. I will show you what I mean. All these lines you see coming out of here, these are all vacuum lines. This is a 22R, the holy grail of JDM motors, especially to come out of the 80s from the Toyota lineage. One of the best engines in my opinion. Incredibly reliable, easy to work on, very simple. But the carburetor systems, this was the last year where Japan was pushing all this technolo technology out of a carburetor system. And you get this intricated and complicated system of vacuum lines. And that is where a con developed because I could not get this engine to run right after it sat in my hanger for six months. It took two different people and one guy that was an absolute Toyota genius to figure out what the issue was. And it was a very small vacuum leak and a little bit of a plug line, even after we rebuilt the carburetor. So that's a little frustrating because it left me stranded and I was going to say stranded. It left me in the hainer not running right. It still got me to where I needed. It just ran rough and was kind of a nuisance for drivability. If you were to go buy a brand new Ford E450 van with the V10, you just turn the key and you go. So consider that. You just go. It's maintenance free. It's fuel injected. You change the oil. There's people that have 60,000 miles and have done nothing but oil changes on those vans. This you sometimes have to tinker with them. They're carbureted, they're 40 years old, they're a four cylinder, maintenance is required on these, but outside that spectrum, they're phenomenal engines. And I prefer a 22R any day over any new RV. And I was considering a new RV. I mean, I am a sucker for the new Mercedes Sprinters, pre-def diesel exhaust fluid, because they'll do 75 miles an hour, and this will not. Those will get 17 miles a gallon, and this, if I'm very lucky, will, but most of the time will not. The downfall is the price, the cost of maintenance on one of those newer RVs versus this. This is very cheap to keep on the road. It's very cheap to maintain. That's a pro. Besides that, I just figured I'd shed some light on the usability of these. It's very versatile. Today, we're literally out just doing odds and ends and getting some work done. We're not camping out right now, but I daily drive this sometimes. I literally will drive this around town because it's easy to drive. It's not a pain to park. And I figured doing a video explaining the pros and cons of these might shed some light if you're interested in a Sun Raider. Keep in mind, like I said, if you're looking on the market for one, make sure it has the six lug axle or be prepared to update that. Make sure that everything is in working order. Water, plumbing, pumps, electrical you want to make sure all that stuff's good to go i updated this with a solar system that's probably one of the best invention not inventions best add-ons you could have done to one of these it's headache free it charges my batteries during the day and runs a shop vac and just about anything you want to throw at it and it's no noisy generator most of these did not come with a generator so you have to consider a lot of the aspects on um power supply. I have a power plug-in right down here. I pull the cable out. I can plug it into uh, a hookup. I also have a water hookup right here. If I was to boondock, quote unquote, but honestly, I never boondock this. There's no reason to. It does everything you want. It's 25 gallon water capacity. Um, that lasts all week. The propane will last all week. The fridge runs off propane. It's totally self-sufficient. So it's a very self-sufficient RV but that meant that I had to do some things to make it self-sufficient. Just consider that. So self-sufficient wise, these are very self-sufficient. They're easy to be off the grid with. That was a big aspect to consider. Overall clearance is amazing with these. Obviously it's not like a earth roamer where it, you, know, you could drive over Antarctica with it, but it clears a lot more than what a typical low RV would. Factory Sun Raiders do not, they sit low. This sat low when I first got it. I did the lift kit to get more clearance, bigger tires. The factory ones sit very low. Uh, top heavy, they're not really top heavy. People think, oh, I bet that thing rolls so easy. And I've been in the worst wind, 70 miles an hour plus, and it is, it is right there. So it's actually quite surprising how stable they are uh, in tilt conditions as well as high wind. They're very stable. And besides that, 
it's been great. I have no plans on really getting rid of it anytime soon. And I hope this video kind of shed some light on the ownership of a Sun Raider and the pros and cons of owning a Sun Raider. And if you have any other questions in regards to a Sun Raider, post them down in the comments and do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll try to do more videos. Or if you want a particular video on, what, on the Sun Raider, ask away because I'm happy to do that. And thanks, and we're going to head on out. Miss Bunker Head. Me? Yeah, you. No. Oh. I forgot. Oh, good. It's good. <laughs>